the highly contagious Delta variant of COVID-19 is circulating, and experts say it could be a cause of concern in Alabama, which has one of the lowest vaccination rates in the country. Today, I spoke with Dr. Cameron Webb, Senior Policy Advisor for COVID-19 Equity at the White House. I asked him how Alabamians should be protecting themselves from this variant, if people should return to masking up, and more. Here's that conversation. Dr. Webb, we know that Alabama has one of the lowest vaccination rates in the country. With the uptick in cases due to that Delta variant, how worried are you that Alabama is going to see an increase in hospitalizations and deaths due to the low vaccination rates? Well, I'm worried in any community that has low vaccination rates right now, just because of what we're seeing with this Delta variant. It spreads faster, spreads farther, and the early data is telling us that it causes more hospitalizations. So in any community that does have low vaccination rates, uh, you know, as soon as we see that uptick in cases because of Delta, we know that it's going to get to more people and that we're going to see more individuals in the hospital because of COVID. And so it has me worried. It's part of the reason why we're reaching out to, to all communities and really continuing to encourage folks uh, to get vaccinated now before we're, we're you know, chasing uh, an increase in case of this Delta variant. At this point, we have a local expert that says we need to be prepared in Alabama for a surge of summer cases. We also have a governor who says Alabama is open for business and is moving forward without any health restrictions. So do you foresee a, a tipping point where if cases rise, then the state would need to look at implementing restrictions? Well, I think that where we start is that we've got really good guidance in place already to help stem the tide a little bit. So the guidance is that if you're vaccinated, then you're protected and you should be okay. And if you're not vaccinated, you should wear a mask and maintain distance. And so that's the current best guidance based on the science that tells us what people should be doing at this moment to make sure that they stay safe, make sure their communities stay safe, and make sure we continue to, to move forward in ending this pandemic. Now, if we do see a significant uptick in the number of cases, I think we have to do a couple of things. We have to focus on testing. We have to focus on contact tracing. We have to make sure we've got treatments for folks who have, who have COVID and could have severe outcomes. And we have to make sure we're continuing to vaccinate folks at the same time. That's going to be an all hands on deck kind of moment. And I think that we, if we do get to that moment, it's going to be a really important conversation, you know, for, for the state and local leadership about what else could we be doing to stem the tide. But I think for now, we've got the kind of guidance that we need to keep communities safe. We know again that Alabama has a very low vaccination rate, but much of that is not due to a lack of access, is not due to a lack of information. It is just due to people simply not wanting to get the shot. So how do you change those people's minds? Well, I, I would push back on that a little bit and say that sometimes not wanting to get the shot is because of a lack of accurate factual information. Sometimes people just don't want to get the shot, but there are, we know that even in Alabama, there are a large segments uh, of the community who say that they're just not ready yet. They want to wait and see, or they're concerned about the safety and the efficacy of the vaccines based on some, what we know are some misinformation or some distance information. And so, you know, there still are folks who are out there who are yet vaccinated, but are willing to be vaccinated. And, you know, I was in Alabama just the other week, we were talking to some of those folks, we know that we continue to have to do the work of answering their questions. And if you go into any community into any neighborhood and talk to anyone who's not yet vaccinated, and simply ask, well, what is it that you're concerned about, you'll hear all of those dynamics, you'll hear concerns about, you know, the vaccines that we can address based on the science uh, behind the vaccines, but we have to have have those conversations that has to be the next step in order for folks to get the information they need to make that decision and if ultimately they decide they don't want to get vaccinated anyway knowing the facts knowing the science then we just need to encourage them to make sure they're doing their part by wearing a mask maintaining distance until this is over do you think that alabama should offer some or any type of incentive for people to get vaccinated well, you know, I'm sitting here in Virginia, you know, I think Alabama knows what's best to motivate folks in Alabama, but I think that, you know, we have seen that incentives have been effective in some communities. They've been an effective way to, to spread the word and, and make sure people are excited and enthusiastic about getting vaccinated. Uh, but there are other things as well. And I think even, uh, unfortunately, the looming threat of spreading Delta variant is a strong motivator as well. So, you know, we know that people are going to get motivated to get vaccinated once they see cases rising. So that's one piece. But outside of that, really, it is tapping into what you know about your neighbors, about your community, about the state of Alabama to really get folks mobilized to get vaccinated.
You mentioned that Alabamians know what's best for other Alabamians. Now, there were some remarks that were made, uh, I believe, earlier this week by the administration about door-to-door -door information and door-to-door -door access up to vaccines. We have some local leaders who are not thrilled about that idea. What do you have to say about that concept? Yeah, the door-to-door the -door concept is really just people from community in community. It's about health professionals from community talking to their neighbors. It's about community-based organization leaders talking to relatives and coworkers. It's about faith leaders talking to friends and community. It's really about people who are already living in your community saying, here's why I decided to get vaccinated. Here's the, the data, the science, the information that I used to make my decision and engaging in an honest dialogue with your neighbors. And I think that's what the door-to-door -door concept really is. I think that some people are misconstruing it and turning it into something political where it's not. It's simply neighbors being good neighbors, people being their brother's keeper, and folks saying that we want to get through this together. But I think that you know we always want to encourage communities to lean into each other and to lift each other up and to, to try to do whatever they can to help in this pandemic. And so uh, that's the reason why we're, we're encouraging uh, community organizations, faith organizations, health professionals to, to get out there and spread the word. Um, but, but, you know, I think that uh, it's really the, the key here is making sure that communities know that the power is in your hands to, to really help drive this pandemic to its end. Awesome. Dr. Webb, I know you have a hard stop. I appreciate your time and uh, we thank you for, for everything you're doing. Thank you. Take care. This is Ivana Harinkiu for AL.com.